Hello and welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework and tutorial series. And this is now the part number four, where we are finalizing our deployment. Uh, we're doing the final packaging of our web part, making it sure that it's actually working independently so we don't have to run the local host anymore. So we're doing the fully polished deployment. Well, we're not doing the descriptions and images and all of that, but it will be an independent uh, solution package. My name is Sasa Yuvanen. I'm a product manager in the Microsoft 365 platform side of the house. Um, and let's actually jump right into it. So we were left the in the part three on the moment where we realized that, well, the web part works uh, on a page, which is really, really cool. But now we have this challenge that the web part still requires that the local host is running because we are referencing to the local host in the web part package. So this certainly isn't the right way of doing things. Uh, we want, to want this web part to be completely packaged properly and independent. So let's actually do that. Let's do the right steps to fully deploy this web part and the solution. Uh, to the SharePoint Online without uh, the local host dependency. Now, how do we do that? Uh, again, in the package solution JSON files, super, super, super important settings, and these are really for the packaging. And one of the most important settings here is include client-side assets. We are now in the version 1.14, and this one was introduced uh, it's earlier in a 1.4 version, quite a few years ago. But before that, uh, we had always the requirement that as we're deploying our solution, we also need to reference the files from Azure or from some other location. So you had a URL endpoint from where the files are being served. But as part of the 1.4 version, we then introduced this include client-side asset option. And what it means is that the package comes to be completely independent. So inside of the SPPKG file, being the zip file, we also have the JavaScript files and the image assets and all of the other assets which we want to be so that I can send that SPPKG file to anybody else in the world and it will work. There's no dependencies on anybody else to, uh, hosting anywhere, anything else in any external system. Any, everything is hosted from that particular tenant. So which actually provides a nice security boundary. It provides nice uh, access points. You are all the time in the same network as well. There's also automatic single sign-on and all of those benefits, uh, which are available already and have been available for all, from a day one of SharePoint framework. Now, there's quite a few other settings here, which we do not focus uh, on this video. So the key point here is that the include client-side asset is by default true, and that means that the packages are inside of the of the, uh, the assets are inside of the SPPKG file. Now, let's actually do the required steps now to package this solution in the right way. And this is almost like in the tutorial tree where we um, prepared the bundle and the packaging, but we're using a bit of a different different switch now. So let's do call up bundle bundle and that's a ship and we're basically preparing for shipping and that's what the dash dash ship means there it doesn't refer to any boats or sea or lakes or anything like that so we're ready to ship and that's what we're doing here so gallop bundle does the ship cup bundle does this boat what we do anyway never mind so we're basically repackaging the solution repackaging the assets and getting everything ready to get properly packaged inside of the SharePoint Framework Solution package, and that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to do here arrow up, Oop, arrow up, and then I'm going to actually get rid of the current text. There we go, and we're going to do package, uh, call up package dash solution, and that's the ship or that's the boat. That would be so cool. Now, and that will then prepare the SPPKG file again, a new version of the SPPKG file in this SharePoint solution folder, which is ready to be used as an independent package, not referring anymore to the assets hosted locally. And we can actually see that if we open up the debug folder, and if we open up the and uh, have started analyzing some of these files, we can actually see it inside of this files whenever the, the rendering actually works. There we go. So as an example, internal module base URLs in this web part uh, as definition file or XML file is now referring to HTTP 
SP client side asset library. So this one will be a dynamic reference of the internally automatically hosted assets from the tenant. So we're no longer referring to the local host. We're saying serve these assets from the centralized location, which is SP client side asset library, which is a hidden library actually in the app catalog side. So technically it's a library where we are then extracting the package and from where we are serving all of the JavaScript files and other assets. So that's simple enough. So let's actually do that. So let me actually close that one. Let me close the browser. Well, not the whole browser. I actually do want to uh, manage uh, the app. So let me actually get that one back. That's our app. So that's good. Let me do a refresh in this page. There we go. And then let me go to the SharePoint solution page. We have a new version available matching the timings that it has been recompiled uh, in a different time than the previous version, which we copied to be the zip file. I will track and drop this in here. I will paste it in. And it's going to ask me that do I want to replace? Yes. Before we actually do that, let's let's double check things before I do that, because we had that page open. If we now go in here, we're not serving from a local host. And if I now do an F5, we can actually say that we have a problem. The loading isn't working because again, local host isn't running. But as we roll out the new version of the solution packet, the web part instances are automatically updated across the tenant with the latest version. And that is, that is a really important thing to understand. We are always referring to the same version. So even though we install the solution to the site, it is not a separate version of the code because it's the same version of the code. And what happens now is that as we roll out the new version of the same package, it will automatically update all of the instances across the tenant and I will enable the, enable the application as well. And now if we go to that site where we previously had uh, the web part already in place and we do another refresh, we can actually see that the instance has been updated and it is rendering properly. And this again comes to the fact that all of the instances were updated across the tenant because they're referring to the same set of JavaScript files and assets and all of that. Um, and right now, if we go back into Visual Studio Code, we can say that the local host is not running. What's actually really, really cool here uh, also is that if I actually do an not F11, F12, yes, I will want to open up a dev tools. Hello, remember my decision. There we go. And open dev tools. And let's do a bit of a side by side uh, investigation. So if I now go to the sources, we can actually see that our JavaScript file is getting served directly from the app catalog. So there's our JavaScript file, there's the minimized JavaScript file, there's the image which is referring, and that is actually the location where the file is served from. And that's actually really, really cool. Now I'm going to do a bit more detail than explanation than in the tutorial. So first of all, in the tutorial, we're also calling out that you want to enable uh, Microsoft 365 CDN, which is absolutely true. And in that case, the URL is a bit of a different, but regardless is the CDN enabled or not, assets are already being served directly from within side of the tenant, which is really, really cool. Now, as we deployed the SPPKT file to the tenant, what actually happened was that we extracted in the app catalog client side assets, the individual ID of the solution. So now if I go here and if I go to the app catalog, where's my app catalog? There's my app catalog. And I'm going to uh, check the name again, client side assets and here. And now if we go from the URL and we'll say client side assets, we can actually see all of the solutions and their assets which have been installed within this tenant. In our case, in this tenant, there's only one solution which has been installed. And if I open up that folder, I can actually see all of the assets which are now extracted from the SPPKT file and are available to get served for the instances which are available across the tenant. And this is also the reason why it's all, all of the existing instances are getting updated at the same time, because there's no alternative copies of this web part. There's only one set of files, one set of the files of truth within this tenant related on this solution. And then as we start requesting or as the, the SharePoint Online 
or browser start requesting these assets, then there's the JavaScript file, there's the translation files, uh, modeling all support, of course, supported, and then that's the actual JavaScript file which is getting served. Let's see if we can actually get it open. That's the minimized version of the JavaScript file which was generated from our TypeScript uh, from Visual Studio Code. So what basically happen is, happens here is that as we build stuff in TypeScript with the intelligence, all of these cool goodies and, and, and uh, awesome development experience, as we are ready to deploy, we run the code bundle that runs through the code through Webpack and then the Webpack and, and the tooling will minimize all of the additional texts and ad additional uh, settings and additional spaces and this is the outcome. So that's the per JavaScript which is getting then served in a browser generating actually this web part to be visible in here. And that's how it works behind of the scenes, uh, the whole system. But just to recap here, uh, what we did in this part four is that we basically just did a repackaging of our solution. So we did a calp bundle, that's a ship, not dash dash boat. I know, bad joke. And then we did a calp package solution, dash dash ship. Um, and then that gave us an SPPKG file, which is technically ready to get submitted to the store. It's just ready to get submitted to any tenant within the world, and it will generate exactly the same outcome. Also, it has the contextual APIs and contextual information based on the site where it's actually being used. So now, just to prove that in a, as a final, final, final 30 second demo, let me go on the root of the, of the tenant, well, on the SharePoint of the tenant, I will create a site. Let's create a communication site here. Let's call that uh, comps. That's cool. Let's create the site. Site is getting created in one, two, three, four, five. That was really fast. I'm not interested about the templates in this case. I'm going to create a new page in this site. And now, as we have the solution and the web part deployed in the app catalog, but it's not yet visible and deployed and activated in the site, we would not actually see it. So let's actually, yeah, let's actually do one more step here. Let me close this. There we go. We first need to enable that site uh, application to be available in the site. As long as the browser starts to behave. There we go. And I will add that app to be available in the site so that the web part is being known within the site. So I'm adding that to the site. There we go. It has been added to the site. Let me go back on the com site and let me create a new page. Let me call that the Plank page. Let me create that page. And there's my Plank page. Let's call it Plank. That's Plank. That's Plank. And then we can actually see our Hello World webport there, and we're getting that one. And now the loading from comps is different because, again, we are in the context of this site and this site collection. So therefore, the information is different. So that's actually really cool. Everything is working as expected. One thing to also notice is just to call out there's a bit of a challenge that I've shown this now with a site-specific deployment. And I mentioned this as part of the tutorials and installation sequences that there is an option to actually have the web part immediately available across the tenant. Uh, so that's part of the settings which we can control. And that's a tenant scope deployment option when we have a separate set of tutorials and documentation available for that one. So you do not have to explicitly install the solution to every single site where you're intending to use that. It's a really good thing to understand as well. But that's all we're going to do in this uh, series. So we started the, the web part creation series by scaffolding our first web part. Then we added some code on it. We tested that code. We connected that to the SharePoint online. Then we put the web part on a SharePoint page. And then we did the final packaging in this part four. So super, super easy to start developing using the web stack uh, tooling, um, using TypeScript, using Node and NPM and all of that. Um, and then the coolest thing with SharePoint Framework is that you can target your extensibility and use this exactly the same tooling for Microsoft Teams, for Microsoft Viva, and for SharePoint Online. But follow up on uh, uh, 
continue uh, studying uh, and please continue watching the other videos as well uh, where we're showing you other technical opportunities and technical uh, details on the SharePoint framework. So for example, tutorials related on using Microsoft Graph APIs, yeah, building for Microsoft Teams and all of that stuff. All of that is available in our tutorials uh, within the YouTube and also in the documentation site. But thank you for watching on this one and hopefully that's helpful.